Kuzangbo, welcome to Bhutan e-learning project. This is Siwang Chuk, teacher of Khasarak Chumjil Secondary School. Today, I will be taking you through inverse trigonometric functions. This lesson is intended for the students of classes 11 and 12, key stage 5. With this, I will move on with the objectives of the lesson. First, we should be able to define and interpret the meaning of inverse trigonometric functions. Second, explain the graph of sine and inverse sine function. Third, state the self-adjusting properties. And finally, we should be able to find the principal values of inverse trigonometric function and solve the problems based on self-adjusting properties. Before we move on to the definition and the interpretation of the inverse trigonometric function, let us recall the six trigonometric functions that we have learned in lower classes. Can you name those trigonometric functions? Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent were six trigonometric functions that you have learned in your lower classes. And today, we are going to discuss the inverse of these six trigonometric functions. To move on with the definition and interpretation of the inverse trigonometric function, let y equal to sine inverse of x, applying sine on both the sides, and on simplifying, you get sine of y equal to x. Now from here, I am going to define what is sine inverse of x. Sine inverse of x is the angle y whose sine is x. Sine inverse of x is the angle y whose sine is x. And one thing you will have to keep in mind is it should be within the it should be within the interval of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, negative 90 degree to positive 90 degree. And x will take the values for from negative 1 to positive 1. And this this is the value that x will take and the y value that sine inverse function will take is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now this is the definition of sine inverse of x. Similarly, we can also define cos inverse of x is so y equal to cos inverse of x is the angle y whose cosine is x. Likewise, we can also define tangent inverse of x is the angle y whose tangent is x. Similarly for rest of the inverse trigonometric functions. Students usually get uh, confused with sine inverse of x and sine x to the power negative 1. This is entirely different. These are two different things. Sine inverse of x denotes the angle, determination of angle, and whereas sine x to the power negative 1, and this negative 1 is power, power of sine function, and whereas sine x to the power negative 1 we can rewrite this as 1 over sine x, whereas sine inverse of x cannot be written as 1 over sine x. This, are, this is one important point that we will have to keep in mind when you deal with inverse trigonometric functions. Likewise, the concept applies for rest of the inverse trigonometric function. So now, in order to avoid, avoid this confusion, we have also another denotation that the sine inverse of x, we can also denote it as y equal to arc sine x. Instead of sine inverse of x, you can also denote it as arc sine x in order to avoid this confusion of sine x to the power negative 1. Now, let us, let us move to the graph of sine function. This is the graph of sine function and it's a periodic function. And this sine function will have its inverse only if the function sine function is one-to-one -one function. So how do you check whether it is one-to-one -one function? You can just, simple way, we can just draw a horizontal line through the graph. And if it touches multiple points, which means there is, there are multiple values for one input value, therefore it is not one-to-one -one function. So now for the sine function to become one-to-one -one function, we will have to impose restriction to the domain of the sine function.
to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And if you impose restriction to the domain of the sine function, so now you are imposing restriction here. Till here, it's negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. And after imposing restriction, the sine function graph will, now you will get the sine function graph from this portion only, and the rest of the portion will go off. As I said, sine function will have its inverse only if it is one-to-one -one function. Now, after imposing the restriction, you can check it by drawing horizontal line, and it will touch only at a single point, and which means it, is a, it has become one-to-one -one function. Meaning is, for a particular value of y, there is only one value of x, which means it has become one-to-one -one function, and sine function will have its inverse. And graph of the inverse function is obtained by the reflection of graph of sine function after imposing the restriction. And where do this sine function reflect? Graph of the sine function will reflect over the line y equal to x. Where will be the line y equal to x? If you draw the line y equal to x, it will pass in this way through the origin. And if you reflect the graph of the sine function over this line, that is line y equal to x, then you get the graph of inverse sine function. And now, after imposing the restriction, now this becomes negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 becomes domain of the sine function, and range of the sine function becomes negative 1 to 1. Now let us look at how the reflection of the sine function graph has taken place over the line y equal to x. Now, looking at this graph, now graph with the arrow is the graph of sine, sine x, sine function. After reflecting over the line y equal to x, dot dot line is the line y equal to x, now, y equal to sine x has reflected over the line y equal to x, and the graph with the endpoint dot is the graph of y equal to sine inverse of x. And this is how the reflection has taken place, and we get the graph of inverse sine function. Now, this is the actual graph of sine inverse function after reflection over the y equal to x. The difference that you can notice is, in case of sine function, domain was negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and now what, what you can notice here is domain and range of sine function and sine inverse function has just interchanged. Domain becomes range of the sine inverse function and the range of the sine function becomes the domain of the sine inverse function. This is one important point that you will have to keep it in mind. Now similarly, we can use the same concept to get the graph of cos inverse function. This is the shape of cos inverse function. And this is also obtained by imposing the restriction to the domain of the cosine function and then reflecting over the line y equal to x. And ultimately, you'll get the graph of cos inverse function. And this is the shape of cos inverse function. And domain here again is from negative 1 to 1. And range of the cos inverse function is 0 to pi. Cosine function and cos inverse function has just interchanged. With the same concept, you can also impose some restriction to the domain of the tangent function and reflect over the line y equal to x and you get the graph of 10 inverse function and this is the shape of again 10 inverse of x and domain and range of 10 inverse of x domain and range of 10 function and 10 inverse function has interchange negative infinity to x domain of the 10 inverse function is negative infinity to positive infinity and range of the 10 inverse function is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. This is, when you solve the problem, these are the important points that we will have to keep in mind. Domain and range of the inverse trigonometric functions. I'm not going to show the graph of other three functions like sec inverse, cot inverse and cosecant inverse. You can use the same concept and try yourself the graph of rest of the three inverse trigonometric functions. Now, let us also discuss the self-adjusting property. Sine inverse of sine theta equal to theta. Now here, in the previous case, we have used y, but here y and theta is same. We are referring to angle only. Sine inverse of sine theta is equal to theta for all the values of theta belonging to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, meaning here is you can write sine inverse of sine theta as theta, provided the range of that function, sine inverse function, lies within this interval that is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Similarly, cos inverse of cos theta, you can write as, a, as theta, provided 
theta is lying within the range of cos inverse function that is from 0 to pi. And 10 inverse of 10 theta can be also written as theta, theta belonging to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that is the range of the 10 inverse function. Similarly, sine of sine inverse of x can be written as x for all the value of value of x belongs to need 1 to 1. It should lie within the interval of need 1 to 1. And cos of cos inverse of x can be written as x, x belonging to, again, within the interval of need 1 to 1. 10 of 10 inverse of x equal to x, provided x belongs to negative, x is within the interval of negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, when you solve the problem, you'll have to keep in mind those, this domain, domain and range of the different trigonometric functions. Now, let us find the value of sine inverse of half. Now, meaning here is, we are asked to determine the angle. Let y equal to sine inverse of half. Applying sine on both the sides, you get sine of y equal to sine of sine inverse of half and finally you get sine of y equal to half. Now what you will have to find out here? We are asked to find out the angle and what is the angle here? Angle here is y. Now you might be wondering from where you will get this y. Sine of y equal to half. So what value of y will you get half? Now recall the stick trigonometric ratio tables. Obviously, if you remember the tick ratio table, sine of 30 degree will give you half. But here we are dealing with the inverse trigonometric function. We will have to express the angle in terms of radian. So now we will convert 30 degree in terms of or into radian. Okay, we know the relation that 180 degree is equal to pi radian. 30 degree will be equal to, let us assume 30 degree as x, now cross multiply. So now 180 degree x is equal to th uh, 30 degree times pi, and x will be equal to 30 times pi divided by 180, cancel 3, 6, 18, which is equal to pi over 6. 30 degree in terms of pi is pi over 6. So now sine of pi over 6 will be equal to half. Therefore, so what is the value of, what is the angle here? So now angle here should be, 30 degree, which is pi over 6, so that sine inverse of so that sine of y is equal to half. Now, next question, we will have to make use of the self-adjusting property that we have discussed just before. We will evaluate or find out the value of cos inverse of cos 2 by over 3. Cos inverse of cos 2 pi over 3. By self-adjusting property, if you remember, we have cos inverse of cos theta, we can write it as theta, theta provided theta lies within the range of cos inverse function. Okay, tell me what is the inverse, uh, I mean the range of cos inverse function? It's from 0 to pi. By this property, we can write cos inverse of cos 2 pi over 3 as cos inverse of cos of 2 pi over 3 as 2 pi over 3, where theta here is 2 pi over 3. Now, this is not enough. What you'll have to do is you'll have to check it whether 2 pi over 3 is lying within the range of cos inverse function. And let us convert to degree and check it whether it is within 0 to pi, which is uh, range of cos inverse function. Okay, 2 pi, pi is 180 degree, so 2 pi over 3, okay, 2 times 180 divided by 3, 3, 6, 18, 2, 6, 12, which is equal to 120 degree, so 120 degree, it is within the range of, I mean, within the range of cos inverse function, which is between 0 degree to 180 degree. Therefore, the solution for this is cos inverse of cos 2 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over 3. With the same concept, that using self, we will make use of self again the self adjusting property and solve another similar question. Next question is sine inverse of sine of 5 pi over 6. Again, 
by the same concept, using the self-adjusting property, we can also write this as sine inverse of sine 5 pi over 6, we can also write this as 5 pi over 6. But before coming to the conclusion, we will have to check it here whether this value theta is lying within the range of sine inverse function. Now let us recall what is the range of sine inverse function. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So now if you check it, pi pi over 6, obviously this will not lie within, within the interval of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which is negative 90 degree and 90 degree. It will be beyond that. Therefore, what you will have to do is, you will have to do one extra thing here. We will have to manipulate, do some manipulation with the angle theta here. Now this is not equal to, we know that, of course, by using self-adjusting property, you can write S equal to pi pi over 6, and we know that pi pi over 6 is not within the range of sine inverse function. We will have to play with the angle pi pi over 6 and convert to the angle that is within the range of sine inverse function. Now what I will do is, okay, sine inverse of, sine of, now pi pi over 6, I will write it as pi minus pi over 6. Pi minus pi over 6, if you check it, if you take LCM and simplify this, 6 pi minus, 6 pi minus pi is 5 pi over 6. You get the same value. I have done nothing here, but I just have uh, split this 5 pi over 6. And we can write it as pi minus pi minus pi over 6. For the timing sine inverse, we can keep aside. We will focus on, the, on this area, sine of pi minus pi over 6. Again, if you remember in your uh, compound and multiple angle, uh, part we have also discussed the concept, you have learned the concept, you have the concept or the idea of allied angles. And I will make use of this con concept of allied angle here. Now sine of pi minus pi over 6, we start measuring of our angle from the initial position, 0 degree. Now sine of pi minus pi over 6, till here is pi over 2, 90 degree, plus pi over 2 is 180 degree, which is pi. Now sine of pi, till here it is pi. Minus pi over 6, now pi over 6 here is 30 degree, which is acute angle, less than 90 degree. 180 degree, okay, sign up. 180 degree minus pi over 6. If you remember the relation in the allied angle, concept of allied angle, you have sine of pi minus theta, you can also write it as sine of theta. With this concept, you have sine of pi minus pi over 6 is sine of pi minus pi over 6, pi over 6 is less than 90 degree, it still lies in second quadrant. In the second quadrant, you know that all students take coffee. So now sine in the second quadrant is positive. So therefore, sine of pi minus theta, you can write it as positive sine theta. With the same concept, you can write this as sine inverse, you already have in the question. Sine of pi minus pi over 6, you can write it as sine of pi over 6. Now you can make use of the self-adjusting property. Sine inverse of sine pi over 6, you can now, you can write it as, this is equal to now pi over 6 by using self-adjusting property. And again, we cannot conclude. Check it, pi over 6. What is the value of pi over 6 in terms of degree? It is 30 degree. Is it lying within negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Yes, which means sine inverse of sine pi over 6 is equal to pi over 6. Before I leave this platform, I have some work for you. Question number one, find the principal values, find the principal values of inverse trigonometric functions. First question, cos inverse of root 3 over 2. Second question, 10 inverse of negative 1. Here you will have to find out the angle. And second question is solve using appropriate property. Cos inverse of cos 2 pi over 3. And finally, cos inverse of cos 9 pi over 8. These are your assignments. And you can refer the properties and try back at home. Thank you so much for attending my lesson. See you in the next lesson.